Hey everybody, this is Dan from the Geek All Stars. I'm going to do a little unboxing from Point Reavers of Midgard by Gray Fox Games. This is a game by J.B. Howell. This was a release, uh, it was kind of a pre release at Gen Con. Uh, I believe it'll be coming out either in a few weeks. I know there's some pre orders going on at Miniature Market and I think cool stuff. So I picked this one up myself. This was not a review copy, this was uh, something I bought at Gen Con. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the game. I did get to play it. It is a pretty big, it's nice and heavy. Nice and heavy of a game. It's a big old Euro where you're kind of a kind of a spiritual successor to Champions of Midgard, uh, but it is not exactly the same game, and you're doing a little bit different of things for the work replacement. But it is, of course, a work replacement kind of uh, with dice as well. Of course, you're rolling a dice, and there's also going to be some battling in here. Uh, we'll get into that as soon as I uh, get into there. I did open one of these sides a little bit to get it going. Ah, let's get this up. Like I said, we're going to unbox here. This was uh, actually a ton of fun. This is going to be for two to four players. Plays in about... Plays in about an hour to two hours. I figure about two, two and a half with teaching. There you go. This is a nice, nice little rule book. Of course, you've got the skip the rule book and get into a nice how to play video, which is a good thing now. Nice big rule book. But this is not a very thick rule book. I read this online before going to Gen Con, and it is not very thick and involved. So that's a pretty solid thing. It also has a nice things, a nice little glossary in there for you. All right, so it's a huge board, and what I'll do is I'll put this out in a minute to talk about what uh, different things are as far as, uh, you know, what the different spaces are in just a minute, because there's a lot of things going on in there. Of course, you have different bits here. These are going to be pieces that you can acquire, and on the back, when you do acquire them, uh, you will have to pay for them, but you will get different uh, cards and also different resources to unlock once you pick them up. There's also food that you're going to be using. Kind of these uh, little uh, tokens that are going to be, they're almost like the skull tokens in Wars of Waterdeep because when you'll do different things, you'll get those. And they're going to give you, if you have too many of them at the end of the game, you will get a negative points, uh, get some negative points. But worry about that when you read the uh, rules. Again, and here's some other so kind of a uh, set, sort of select set collection because the more you have of certain things, you'll get some points at the end of the game as well. Some things for re-rolls. And again, some food and some of these other tokens will give you other different things, different cards. These are kind of your, I believe they're Jarl or the, the Barbarian cards and some other cards that uh, you'll be used. We'll get into those once I get to them. Here's your player board. Here's some pretty solid player boards here. Uh, you can actually, you'll store your, these are your uh, dice that you're going to get throughout the game. This kind of shows you, which is pretty cool, good little thing to have on here for your, uh, what each dice will do or the different sides for each die. And this is where kind of your leader will go when you decide which leader. They will also give you different things each round, depending on if you have a blue, red, or yellow leader. And up top shows you what the, each leader does. And it will give you, uh, depending on which leader, they'll have a little symbol over here. Uh, they'll give you something that'll be wild. Depending on which color leader, you'll have this symbol, and it'll let you have that uh, as a wild when, you're, when it has on that die. These are the different actions you can take, or some of the different actions you can take. Uh, you've got the raid villages, raid keeps, battle at sea, and subdue territories. Now these are going to be the different prices of them. And again, I'll show you that. This is going to be a real cool game where what you're doing is when you do place, if you're the first one to go there, you're going to get uh, some bonuses and that'll be on the board over there. But you can also tuck cards under here that you can get different bonuses when you do these actions as well. Nice little pretty thick boards. This is kind of your, this shows you a little bit of what each one of, what can come from each one of these tiles. These are territory tiles. Nice little uh, player player aid, and also there's token scoring kind of at the end of the game. And I'll show you again, kind of like I said, a little bit of a kind of a set collection, a majority scoring as well. Uh, these are the different, uh, I believe this is the battles that you can get into, battles at sea. This will show you what you uh, can defeat it automatically or a strength of two and you'll be rolling these black dice. Uh, this is, I believe, the reward and in-game reward as well. Immediate reward and in-game reward. Here are the leader cards. So when you do these, uh, when you recruit them, you can use them right away. You'll get two dice, uh, and you can actually discard it and get one uh, one die to uh, your choice, or you can tuck them. This is where you will tuck them underneath one of these things, and you'll get a bonus when you do go to that action. Uh, and also right here, when you have them as your leader, that'll be the uh, action that you will be able to get uh, a bonus. You know, you use that as a wild. I'm sorry. Over here, some of these cards. These are kind of Things where you're raiding the walls and different things that you can get as bonuses for when you raid the walls. And finally, these other cards, uh, you know, kind of like uh, 
Champions of Midgard, when you do go on a raid, you have to pick up, you're going to have to pick one of these cards. This is the at sea cards, and sometimes they'll have things like, oh, Kraken, you'll have to defeat the Kraken, or discard some food uh, to do different things. And of course, what everybody loves, the All Quiet, where you don't have to worry about anything. There's your different dice. I think there's 40-something uh, of each one of these dice. There's your nice blue dice, red dice, all custom dice. Here's your little bits. And of course, we always love when it comes with uh, when it comes with baggies. Thank you, Gray Fox, for throwing those baggies in there. There's your bits. They've got a nice player, first player token in each color. You have the green, purple, orange, and blue. Nice tokens. And these are the dastardly fighting things. I think there's only like a blank on two sides, yet I seem to roll them every single time. Hopefully when uh, Kirkman rolls and they roll, rolls worse. Since he is dice hate me, hopefully he's a little worse than I am. So let me throw this board out here real quick for you. Give you an idea of what, how big it actually is. And like I said, it is a huge board. There we go. All right. And as you can tell, you're going to be a little, maybe a little hard to see here. Maybe I'll just go ahead and, when you go to each one of these spots, like recruiting Reavers, the first person that goes there will get two extra horns. Those are used for rerolls, and then everybody else gets nothing that goes there because you'll have a lead and follow on each person's turn. Everybody goes, first person goes to trade with villagers. You'll get three of those, and I don't remember what in the world those are. Those might be the, uh, oh, three of the, the selections here of the different things. Is you get to take uh, two horns, three food, two dice, or one of the cards that'll be out here. Uh, the second person gets to do that twice, and the third person gets to do that once. And down here, uh, and the fourth person gets to also do that once. Here there'll be cards, if you see the, uh, the little chains there, uh, and you only use this one in a four player game. Now in these chains, what you can do, the first place person that goes there gets to take two of these. Uh, I'm sorry, gets, I believe they get two, gets two bonus cards. They get one bonus card because you always get to get one of these pairs when you go there. There'll be bonus cards that you will get. Uh, and those are things like I said, raiding the walls and such like that. Uh, also over here, You'll have the battle. Let's see. The first person that goes there will have an extra two points. Nobody else will get anything extra because you'll be able to get a blue card uh, and a green card because the green card will be, uh, I'm sorry, one of those cards will be the at sea card for when you go into battle. And over here, you have the raid keeps. First person that goes there gets two of these extra green cards bonus. You'll always be able to get two, a set when you follow, but the first person gets an extra two. Second person gets an extra one, and that'll cost you two food and two dice on the shield. So there'll be certain... Uh, actions that require certain dice. And when you get the dice, you roll them. Again, sometimes you'll be able to put them on what side you want. Other times you'll be able to use things as a wild. And of course, what you have here is the subdued territories, uh, which will give you these different things. Depending on if you can use food, you either use one, two, three food, which will have better rewards. Here you'll use the certain dice. You have one, two, or three dice. And up here, you'll discard horns, one, two, or three horns. And again, as you discard most of them, more of them, you'll get more of a reward. Uh, you'll also have things that'll go on your board, uh, like so. Right there, you'll have these tokens that you'll be able to acquire from down here. And those will go on your board, and they will let you get different bonuses, like uh, one, uh, one symbol each round and such like that. And then you'll also have other cards over here that'll give you things that you can put your dice on to get rewards as well. Uh, those are the artifact cards over there. And that's it. You know, it's, it looks like it's a lot, and it is pretty big board, which I really like. Uh, this game was a lot of fun. One of my highlights might even be one of my top two or three games. You'll have to wait for the Geek All-Stars to see that. You know, listen to the next show to see what my game of the show was. Uh, one of my favorite games, this is Reavers of Midgard, like I said, by Great Fox Game, a game by J.B. Howell. I think you can pre-order it for about 45 or $50 in each one. Check this one out. Really looking forward to, uh, you know, playing this a little bit more. You'll play this, I believe, over six rounds which is up there. Uh, so please turn into the show. Uh, we've got a new show coming out next week with uh, the Gen Con in review. So check that one out. And thanks for tuning in to the Geek All-Stars. Have a good one.